Hi, I'm Chad Meyeroff with TwinCitiesShoreOnElbow.com, Shore and Elbow Specialist, here to talk to you a little bit about a very common injury that we see in sports, car crashes, and frankly just falls in everyday life, collarbone fractures or clavicle fractures. Now the clavicle is the only bony strut that connects the sternum or the, or the chest wall to the shoulder and the rest of the arm. So you can imagine that collarbone that we have up here on the top of our shoulder holds the entire arm up. So it's really important for everyday function. When these injuries occur, it can be really painful. It can be very scary. And the question is, what are the options? So the reality is most clavicle fractures break right in the middle. It's called a mid shaft clavicle fracture. Some occur on the medial side or the inside called a medial clavicle fracture and often on the lateral end called a distal clavicle fracture. Now those each have different subtleties to them, but let's just focus mostly on the mid shaft, which is the most common, 85% of these injuries. Now, when these occur, the tendency is for the shoulder to slope down when this occurs. Why is that? Well, the reality is if it breaks in the mid portion, gravity will pull the arm down and several muscles pull the medial portion or the inside bone up. So you'll see it displace in some cases. Now, whether it's displaced or not, it's important to know that you do have options. Most clavicle fractures, even when they're highly displaced, will heal. 85% of the time that occurs, again, even when the bones are not even touching. That said, about 15% of highly displaced clavicle fractures will go on to not heal, and about 10% of those will heal in a way that the patient's not completely satisfied with. So it is important that we do have other options available. That said, non-operative treatment would be considered the gold standard where we can use most of the time. When that happens, the first thing you want to do is find a sling. Now, your provider, surgeon, or urgent care should give you one of those right away. And the reason is the sling is designed to support the elbow to keep the collarbone supported and minimize the shifting or displacement. Usually, you're in a sling for about four weeks, maybe a little longer, while the bones are soldering together and early fracture healing occurs. Once the bones heal together, then we start to increase your range of motion exercises with physical therapy. In around eight weeks or 12 weeks, you can start some very light strengthening. Now, return to sport is delayed when these things happen, as is return to work. Now, if you do desk work and typing, that can be done almost immediately. Of course, you can help take care of yourself, but there are some limitations. And when we treat these non-operatively, you really can't lift much weight or even the weight of the arm for about four to six weeks. That said, return to collision sports and heavy occupations is delayed until about six to eight weeks at the earliest. Surgery does offer a little bit faster return to those activities and some other benefits as well. So if the bones are highly displaced or other indications like multiple bone injuries, the reality is surgery can improve the, and expedite your return to sport and work. It also increases the chance that the bones heal, especially in good alignment. Now we have a clavicle here. This is an example of a normal sized clavicle bone. And if it breaks in the middle and it shifts quite a bit, we can use a plate like this one here, that's specially contoured to fit right on the clavicle and, and be low profile. We bring the bones together and repair them with the plate and screws most of the time. While this surgery is not always indicated and certainly is not mandatory, it can improve the time to return by about two or three weeks. It can also improve the alignment of the bones. So the shoulder's in a more normal alignment that allows the best possible strength. And of course, it does provide a little bit better cosmetic deformity where patients prefer not to have their shoulder slouching down. It also gives a better chance for earlier rehab and to maximize early return. There are some risks to the surgery. There's a small risk of infection or wound issues, nerve injury, small chance that the plate bothers the patient and wants to have it out at some point. The, re the reality is it's a very thin area, and so it is fairly easy to feel that plate. Although the modern plate technology is relatively low profile, still about 20% of patient patients may ask to have that be removed at some point. We tend to wait a year because most of the time you'll get used to the plate and no longer bother you by that point. And the reality is the fracture is a little bit more healed at that point. And so taking it out has a little bit less chance of re-injury. Now that said, there's also a chance of a little numbness along the chest wall, because there are some nerves that come along that area, but most patients are not too bothered by that. 
It's important to know that when you have these collarbone injuries, they are common, there are options, both non-operative and surgical fixation can be very good choices. The correct one for you is a matter of meeting with your surgeon or your physical therapist and deciding what best gets you back to your lifestyle that you want in the most reliable way. I'm Chad Myroff with TwinCitiesSholeAndElba.com. I'd love the opportunity to meet with you in person or virtually and discuss how we can best get you back to your way of life.